In this world, if you can't swim, you found the drizzle. Yeah. And if you fall, you better pick your punk ass up. That's right. Will you put this fucking gun down? Don't look at for some evil doing type. I got a couple boys in the rodeo. Take out the general. It's like your dad's brother. And? It's a made man. He's a fucking legend. There's a war burning on the streets between the most vicious biker gang in Tulsa and a New York gangster. I want Mam Freddy. Get him into a jail cell somewhere I can get. What's going on, YouTube? We back in the Low Key Cave, Keyshawn Knives YouTube page, aka Mr. Low Key, and we back with another TV show review, and we back with my guy, the White Tulsa King. This is episode eight review of Tulsa King season one. Of course, man, we got my people out here trying to get right as far as the White and his crew. With everything that's going on, with so many different obstacles coming their way, especially from this motorcycle crew, he's personally trying to get them prepared to protect themselves. Give or take, you gotta understand the people he's dealing with, especially the white. Like, you're dealing with people who ain't necessarily in the streets, in particular, in no mob, or they ain't never really had these type of things going on. One scene I like in particular is with the young girl. I forgot her damn name, but she really speaks up this episode, especially to the white. Almost somewhat calling them out. Like, yo, you do know you came in and kind of disrupted our lives. Like, we were kind of, I mean, living normal lives, but now you've kind of brought a lot of drama to our lives. I mean, life and death situations. But give or take, we are adults. We know what we was doing. We know what we signed up for. But she basically telling him, like, give us a little warning. You so nonchalant about everything. You make it seem like that it's really not as big as it is. And it actually kind of is. Like, we could die. <laughs> That's basically what she said to him, man. It was a very humbling moment for Dwight, too. I really like this young lady. And I got to find out her name, man. Because she kind of been low-key throughout a couple of episodes besides this one. Where she shows that she's a really good shooter. And she's pretty much transparent with Dwight. She's not afraid of him. And she's going to speak up. On the other end, though, everybody else, it's like, yeah, you, besides Mitch, of course, and Dwight, and of course, this girl now, it's kind of everybody else ain't even it. Like, Tyson, <laughs> as much as bad as Tyson want to be on, man, he's not ready. He's not prepared at all, man. And we're going to talk about him, too. But yes, man, uh, it's pretty much trying to get everything established as far as him kind of get this crew, more so than anything defend themselves he really ain't looking for him i think for protection because it comes to a point where he goes to mitch and tell him like yo we need to get like some real established guys it's a lot about to go down and we need to get some real killers basically we need some real thoroughbreds out here that can really spin a block <laughs> on the other end though we have another meeting with the white and they bring in the weed guy Pretty much trying to set up this whole casino thing. Once again, the White is really trying to take over Tulsa, Oklahoma, and make it his own thing. It's establish his own thing. It's a lot going on, especially with everything in the mob ties going on back home with Chucky. Remember last episode, Chucky took out his pops. Like he was tired of that shit. He tired of the whole the White comparisons. Another thing I want to talk about with Chucky, man. Apologies to Chucky. I thought, and apologies to the show, because I thought they was trying to fool us to make it seem like that he actually had on real hair. And he actually acknowledges that it was a toupee. So it was not a real, uh, not supposed to be real hair on his head, because I was just looking at that scene after he killed his pops. And I was like, why are he fixing his hair like that? Is that supposed to look like that? Are we supposed to know that this is fake? I didn't know that shit was fake, man. I was... But anyway, between the white. And Mitch and everybody trying to get this um, gambling casino established, including Bodie, who's pretty much the brains and the one that can pretty much get everything established, being what he's doing with the cryptocurrency. Chucky, on the other end, though, he's back home, and he's pretty much getting everybody established to let them know that he wants to take out the white. But it's a couple of people there that's like, yo, not only is the white a made man, but this is your uh, father's brother. Like, they was like this. Like, you really going to try to do that? And, of course, Chucky's not trying to hear anything. he been on Dwight's ass since he got out. He don't want to hear none of that. Once again, Dwight is already kind of like, eh, about everything that's going on with the mob because of the things that he's done. Been, he's been finding out lately since he's been out. But, yeah, Chucky, he's pretty much on the war path, and he wants Dwight gone immediately. No matter made man or not, he's the big man now, and now he wants blood. Another thing that's going on, my girl Stacy, man. Once again, 
people are kind of looking at your boy Dwight, especially the feds coming in. But Stacy, she done had enough of this shit because she already irritated with the whole thing as far as wall trip and the fact that he killed Roxy. So now she knows that, but she ain't got no hard concrete evidence to know he killed her, but she got the other things that she's been trying to come at after him for, gun running, all the other stuff. So now she's getting a little frustrated with the feds coming in and trying to pay attention to Dwight, and she's like, no, fuck all of that. This guy got other shit going on. So she makes the smart play, and she starts talking about the money. Come on. We already know when you start talking about some money, that's going to get everybody's attention, including the law. So when she starts talking about some money that Wall Street could possibly dive in, especially tax evasion, now you caught the feds' attention and you got their interest. Trying to really get them off of Dwight because they start mentioning certain things with Dwight as far as who he's been seeing. Of course, they named the horse wrangler who he's been seeing as far as the girl that owns, owns the horse ranch or whatever. But they also say he's seeing another female. Of course, we all know that's Stacy. So now she's definitely trying to get everything away from them looking at Dwight and keep it established on Wall Trip and his motorcycle gang. Outside of that, though, we got Dwight and Mitch pretty much getting a couple of guys together. I think some guys that Mitch knows from bull riding and pretty much getting a established crew as far as some hitters, some real guys who can handle guns and weapons. And that's what he, him and Dwight is pretty much trying to get established so they know what's coming down as far as his motorcycle crew. Outside of that, though, I don't think he know too much as far as the whole thing with Chucky and the mob. That's going to be a different angle. Outside of this, man, my guy Tyson, man, I'm always enjoying the scenes between Tyson and his pops, man. Um, once again, nothing bad not happen to Tyson. Because every time we keep getting these moments, I keep feeling like, man, something's going to happen to Tyson. Something's going to happen to Tyson because his pops is on him like, yo, man, no matter what you feel or what you think, what you're doing is not cool and it's not going to have a happy ending. You what you out here doing. Once again, he's established himself with Dwight. He's out here doing criminal activities. He's doing goddamn gangster shit. Once again, Tyson don't seem like that type of guy that, I ain't going to say he can't handle himself, but he's not prepared for what comes with this as far as possibly dying or I feel like even going to jail possibly. I mean, look at the situation that happened when they got beat down. I mean, he got his ass whooped. Even with them doing this whole shooting range and practicing, he can't handle a gun. He trying to turn it sideways like he ain't got them uh, uh, Boys in the Hood of Menace to Society movie. Only reason I make those comparisons is because, you know, that's the early days when he's trying to turn the gun to the side or whatever, shoot them with him. Think about uh, don't be a menace while drinking your juice in the hood. But anyway, the moment with him and his father, though, is a real good touching moment. It's an emotional moment. And it's once again establishing how much I don't want to see Tyson die. <laughs> but I keep feeling like the show keeps kind of edging and teasing towards that, especially after this moment. Because it's like the tw second or third moment we done got with them. And his dad telling him, like, yo, you done made your own choices. You know, you got to live with the consequences. But just know that we did everything we could, which is right. Especially as a parent, when you done put everything you could in, establish, make your kids know right from wrong, especially. And they decide to make their own choices and go out on their own, even though you know they're making the wrong choice. Got to learn on his own, man, but I just hope he don't learn the hard way. Shout out to Tyson. Tina, uh, Dwight's daughter, she is really kind of looking like she's wanting to come on out there. Even after the conversation with her husband, I was thinking maybe she wouldn't, being that the whole thing with Dwight, but being that since he's been home and, you know, they had that whole conversation with what happened with her and Nico and him doing what he did, you can definitely see them getting closer. And you can see that she's kind of like, yo, I'm just wanting to just move out there. Shout out to Dwight, because I was wondering, was he going to put this on hold? Because he got so much going on out there as far as the drama with the motorcycle crew and all of that, even with the whole thing with the law kind of being on him a little bit. And he does end up telling her, as far as his daughter Tina, that she needs to hold off for a minute as far as coming out there. But he don't tell her the full truth. He kind of says that he just needs to get things set up to make sure they're comfortable and the kids or whatever. Get what he's doing, man. And I, like I said, I still don't know how that's going to work, being with who he is and how he moves and does things. I mean, of course, I ain't going to feel like there ain't no going to be no happy ending. I'm just going to say that, man. Look, we dealing with a guy that's doing what he's doing in a show like this. Ain't no way it's going to be a happy ending. With all that being said, I would love for her to become able to come out there and chill with uh, Dwight and there'd be no issues. <laughs> But not in this world, and plus we wouldn't have a good show if we didn't have some little tense scenes or some drama. Outside of that, though, Stacy, she's fed up. Like I said, she's pissed. And now that she's got them kind of looking towards this money tax evasion situation, they get the chance to raid um, Wall Trip's motorcycle crew. Of course, he's not there at the time of the raid or whatever, but she does come across his laptop, which, of course, 
the thing she was trying to get Rox to get in the first place that could have some really damaging evidence against Waltrip. So she does end up coming across this. And this is when she pretty much sees the things that Walter has been doing as far as money. Yes, he's in everything. Gambling, everything, cryptocurrency, he's into that. He's into everything. So now she's pretty much got their attention. Now the feds and them, ATF, they want wall trip now. And I kind of feel like now it's a little bit different and kind of getting away from the white I mean, the attention that he kind of brought on himself or whatever. Now she's pretty much, as far as Stacy, done got the feds and them wanting wall trip now. Now he is the guy out here on the run. Speaking of wall trip, he is trying to get the white. And now he's doing what he's doing as far as getting the uh, local law in his pocket. And he's trying to use them to go get the white, the same people that got Tyson. So he's pretty much <laughs> telling them, man, y'all better do this shit. I'm going to kill y'all. More than likely, he's going to threaten their families too and all of that. So he wants them to go pretty much pull up the white. Of course, that shit don't go the way they think it's going to go, especially when they try to do Tyson that way and the white went around. So the white pretty much... Tells him, nigga, I'm holding on to a 357 Magnum that could blow a hole through you that your fist can fit through. Pretty much, y'all need to walk away. My whole thing with this scene was like, nigga, how fast is he going to be able to pull this big-ass gun out before you and your partner, who already established y'all got weapons, I'm pretty much to shoot faster than this gun. I'm pretty sure y'all could take him out. With that being said, maybe y'all weren't trying to do that. I'm playing devil's advocate because I'm saying that the way he was able to pull this off, I mean, okay, I guess we're supposed to go with this, but I'm just saying... But he does, he, Dwight is able to talk his way out of the situation, pretty much putting a little bit of fear in the local cops. But, I mean, he is who he is as far as where he come from. And they probably not used to this type of static, being that they just been dealing with wall trip and his motorcycle game. So they do back off. Of course, later on, we got Chucky calling Dwight. Immediately when this conversation started to happen, I was like, look at this nigga Chucky. Thank you, he slipped. Pretty much calling Dwight, telling him, man, look, man, I want to kind of dead all of this Tension we done had. You done seen my pops passed or whatever. Being he the one killed him, but still, his pops passed. The white does remind him though, like yo, um, remember I heard your pops tried to have me killed in jail. Y'all remember Ahmad, the dude that tried to kill the white when he first moved to Oklahoma, who was a part of his crew. Now he put him on to let him know that Pete Nimble was pretty much going to try to have him killed in jail because they didn't think he was going to be able to keep his mouth shut during that time. So he still been kind of holding on to this, even though he ain't kind of brung it to the forefront as far as to Pete. Now he can't because Pete's dead. But all that being said, and he does let Chucky know this, Chucky is pretty much hitting him with the side story, you know, trying to convince him, like, yo, everything, I just want to dead all this. I don't want no more drama. I don't want no more beef. Matter of fact, how about I just come out there? How about I just come out there? You know what I'm saying? We just make amends. We have dinner. We chill. You know what I'm saying? I come out there. The first thing I said was Dwight was like, bro, you got to think about this, man. Why wouldn't he invite you to come out there to him? Or maybe he was going to think that you thought that was going to be some type of setup or something or you want, he wasn't going to agree to do it as far as Dwight. But that being said, it just still sounds too suspicious because it's like Goody, as far as the, the other dude had just came out there. Why do he need to come out here now? They can establish or do what they need to do over the phone. And I'm really, really hoping that White is thinking about this. With all that being said, the White does have a lot of other things in his mind, like this wall trip guy as far as the uh, motorcycle crew or whatever. So I'm hoping he's thinking, man, because, of course, this is a setup. And even after Chucky's done with the phone call, you see they letting it know that this is a setup. He's going out there to kill the White. Man, it's going to be interesting to see how this go down as far as on this next episode because I knew they weren't going to do nothing on this episode. All that being said, your boy Waltrip is out here mad as far as the motorcycle gang leader. He told the cops, and the cops let him know that they couldn't find the white, even though they did find him, but they can't tell him that he pretty much threatened them, and then they got shook, and they left. <laughs> so Waltrip is pretty much at the edge. He's done now. The fact that they didn't even get him, put him on ahead of time as far as the raid. Remember, Stacy got the laptop, and now the fact that they can't even get the white and put him in jail because that's the only place that he can get his hands on him. Now it's going to be a lot going on, and Waltrip is pretty much over the edge, and he's done with trying to play by the rules. He's pretty much about to go AWOL. We got my guy, Hermod, man. Hermod is pretty much talking to his wife, and he's making it clear that he doesn't want to move still. His wife, though, she wants to move. And Hermod is pretty much on his mob tie shit. He even started going some shit like, I shouldn't have left New York. I should have stayed in Brooklyn. I should have never been running. And that's what he feeling like. He feeling like he just been running, and now he don't want to run no more. He want to pretty much hold it down, ten toes down, stand his own ground. His mom, uh, but his wife, she ain't feeling it. 
once again, she's thinking about the kids, and she like, I see who you running with. I see what type of things going on. I even see how your personality is you know, done change as far as uh, how Amaya's wife talking to him. And it has. This nigga's even in there fixing like Sicilian, uh, Italian spaghetti and shit. Like he back on the mob ties type of vibes. So she's seeing all of this and she's noting the differences and she doesn't want to be a part of it. And she's not going to let the kids be a part of it. And this kind of sends Ahmad over the edge. He starts slinging that plate. That should look good too, man. He was tripping. Got in that spaghetti and that salad. Drinking that little wine. But anyway, <laughs> she lets him know like you can either go sleep somewhere else or we out. So she's putting her foot down. She's going to get a divorce if he does not stop dealing with the white, basically. So it's going to be interesting to see how I deal with this situation and the fact that he is pretty much feeling like he is enjoying himself because this is where he came from. This is what he was um, going through or this is what he was dealing with or what he was apart before he even got married and moved out there because once again, he moved out there because he was kind of running from the situation he had to deal with with the mob or whatever in New York. Well, all that going down... We got Stacy and Dwight having a conversation. Stacy pretty much letting Dwight know that now Wall Trip and his gang, as far as his motorcycle, motorcycle crew, have a warrant out for their arrest. They are pretty much fully um, structured to go after them now. But in the midst of them having this conversation, Dwight pretty much trying to see if Stacy was trying to goddamn trying to see see what's up with that. With all everything going on and the fact that he's still dating an old girl, as far as the horse ranch owner, he's still feeling Stacy, of course. But then out of nowhere, Ball Trip pretty much comes up shooting him. And there's some dude that he been riding with, but he getting shot down anyway. But not before Ball Trip ends up getting they shot off to Stacy, and he ends up driving off. Now you got Dwight pretty much hot as hell. He's mad, man. Now stacy has been caught in the crossfire. And even the point seeming like she almost saved his life because when they pulled up, Dwight was, had his back turned talking to Stacy, And they could have definitely shot him in the back. <clears throat> so now it feels like he got her pretty much shot, and now he's going to be hot. Now he really on Wall Trip ass. The only thing about this is this really going to have his mind not thinking clearly as far as when Chucky and them come into town, being that they about to come. So is he going to be thinking clear enough not to get set up by Chucky with him having all this anger and his revenge he's trying to do as far as going towards Wall Trip now? Because Wall Trip, like I said, he's a man on the edge. His back against the wall. He got the cops coming after him now. And everything, and all of this been going down since the white came into town. So now he don't care. I mean, he pulled up literally in front of him and let them know, I'm shooting you. So, because Stacy wants, she, if she gets healed, she can establish that Wall Trip is the one that shot at her. So he's going to have everybody on his ass. Once again, he don't care. So, the fact that the white now has to answer to some cops because he does get the gun up out of there, of course, to Tyson, and pretty much he was around the ATF agent, and that's another thing because what kind of questions are coming to, are going to come to Stacy now? Because remember when they was doing a question or whatever, or they was talking about the white and who he been around, and they mentioned this other female, they're going to probably more than likely be asking why were you around the white or what was going on in this situation because the white does stick around because once again I think he's trying to make sure she's going to be okay. So it's going to be interesting how that happened because the police showing up, they're going to be getting names and everything. Man, what's going to go down? And is Stacey going to be able to hold her cover as far as being doing what she's been doing with the white and the fact that she's working with the ATF and the feds been pretty much watching him and somewhat not really coming after him, but seeing what he got going on, establishing his ties with Wall Trip, of course. So this is going to be interesting moving forward, man. Another good episode, and if I'm not mistaken, we are moving into the season finale as far as the next episode of Tulsa King. But y'all let me know in the comment section, how did y'all feel about this episode? Was this another kind of edge of your seat episode? Did you see Stacy actually getting shot in this episode? I didn't. Um, I think she's fine, though. I don't think she's going to die or nothing. I do think she's fine. But if they was to uh, take her out, I'm like, whoa, it's really going to be demon time with Dwight. Not only that, the fact that Chucky and them about to come into town, so how he going to be able to handle both of these situations is going to be definitely interesting. But y'all let me know in the comment section if y'all have had a chance to check out the recent episode of Tussle King, episode 8. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell let you know when I upload new videos. Other than that, we out. And if you don't want to end up like me, get rid of that chip on your shoulder shit. It's not worth the time.